good morning hi i am starting another reading vlog already i know i just posted one very recently um and i don't usually do reading vlogs hallie do you have to make noise right now i'm snuggle instead um I don't usually make reading vlogs, but I just happen to be reading two books in a row that I really want to do reading vlogs for. So one of my favorite fantasy series of all time is the Queen's Thief series. And the newest book came out in the fall last year, in the fall of 2020, uh, which is Return of the Thief, which everyone in the fandom is was so excited about because it's going to be the first book since the very first book in the series that is from the perspective of Eugenides, Jen, the thief, the like main character that the whole story revolves around. Um, but after the first book, you don't see his perspective for the next four books. You just see him from other people's perspectives. And so this new book that came out last fall is the first book returning back to his perspective, Return of the Thief. Also, there's going to be a volcano in it. Also, there were a lot of things ramping up towards the end of the last book, Thick as Thieves, that uh, made it a much-awaited book anyway. Due to a series of unfortunate circumstances last year, I was not able to buy the book in the fall, um, and I have not been able to get my hands on it because either they didn't have it at my library or my library was closed some of the time from lockdowns or I didn't have money to order it online. Between those, th between all of those things, I was not able to get a hold of this book and I've just been dying to read it since last fall. I've been avoiding spoilers. Luckily, it's not a very big fandom, so it's been pretty easy to avoid spoilers, except I had to li had to stop listening to um, a reread podcast because they were starting to spoil this book, even though they were talking about earlier books, which is the Atolian Archives. I'm gonna go back to listening to that after I finish this book anyway. All of which is to say, uh, I saw when I realized that they were going to start spoiling The Return of the Thief on the podcast, I was like, oh, I, I just need to get my hands on that book. And I just like vented about it on Tumblr. And then two people messaged me saying that they would buy me the book because the fandom of this series is just so wonderful and sweet. And so um, with some persuading, uh, Tumblr users, stories we love, thank you very much, thank you, thank you, thank you, um, ordered Return of the Thief for me from Indigo, and here it is. It is so beautiful. I'm so excited to read it. I It's been a couple of years since I read Thick as Thieves, that was in 2018 actually, so three years since I read Thick as Thieves, and I have not reread the others. Um, I have not reread the others since before that, I don't think. Um, but I was listening to the uh, I was listening to the Atolian archives, so that helped me kind of remember what was happening up until they started spoiling things for this book. So, um, but I, I can remember pretty well what happened in the last few books, um, and so I'm very excited to read this. And then I'll probably go back and reread the rest of the books because I miss them. It's been a while. Anyway, let's get started. Yeah. Welcome back. I am 100 pages into the book now. I just love being back in this world so much. It just makes me so happy. Yes, I discovered immediately on the first page that it is not in fact the perspective of Jen, but you know what? I really love seeing him from other people's perspectives and like the mystery of what his motivations are and what his plans are all the time. So it's okay. It's from the perspective of young Aaron Dives, or whose name is Ferris. And I 
I am very intrigued by his character. I feel like this, so far, it has been going through um, kind of stuff that was happening in the conspiracy, in a conspiracy of kings. But now the latest scene I just heard, it sounded like they were talking about Costas being in, I forget, wherever, whatever country he was in for Thick as Leaves with Kemet. So I feel like the first 100 pages of this book was kind of catching up on what's happening in, At in Atolia in the last book, kind of. And now we'll see what happens next. The one ambassador from wherever, I forget, just kissed Atolia. So Jen is going to be very angry and I'm about to see what's gonna happen. which so far is a lot less first person from uh, Ferris's perspective and a lot more just like third person omniscient kind of. I mean, I know it's all written by Ferris, but I just find it just interesting that like a lot of, most of the first half is really mostly from his perspective. And now it's like, I haven't seen him in like many pages at all. Anyway, the Odysseans just came and challenged Jen uh, to a trial to test whether he should be High King, and he won most of the matches, of course. Also, I forgot to update when we found out that um, Relius and Teleus are a couple. I don't remember if that was made clear in an earlier book. It's been a while since I've reread them. But that makes me really happy that Teleus and Relius are a couple. There's been a couple of other uh, gay couples referred to, which is nice. I mean, obviously, Kermit and Costas, but like even some others like among the attendants and stuff, um, which is nice because there wasn't much in the earlier books. And I think that was just, it wasn't the fault of like the author for being homophobic. It was the fault of like a society for it not being as accepted then and now she's like fill, like putting it in the books which is good let's keep reading <laughs> this is the funniest thing the Aetolians are chasing Jen right now he just like made them bet against the Odysseans if they could chase him and catch him just tag, they're just playing tag with the High King throughout the palace. And Jen is like obviously doing all these circus tricks and like sliding down the railing on his feet. And it's hilarious and wonderful and great. What a good, mature, uh, reasonable way to prepare for a literal war. <laughs> I love you, Janidi. What an absolute dork. He just tried to land on a chandelier and fell and fell into a pool and then ran away. And this is how Atolia greets him. Unkingly, she said. My God, I hope so, said the king. I love them. One, Jen, Eugenides, High King of the Peninsula, flying off of his stubborn horse, flipping in the air to land 
in the middle of a knot of fighters and cut Nehusaresh's horse out from under him so that Nehusaresh just ran away. Iconic. We love to see it. Two, Ferris is officially my favorite narrator of war slash battles. It's short, it's succinct, it just does little vignettes, little flashes of things, of important things, or of things that he thinks is, are important. What are you doing, Hallie? Do not lie down on my book, please. And no drawn out descriptions of action sequences, unless it is Jen being ridiculous. This is all I want to see. Three, well, three, I was going to read a quote, but Hallie is currently sitting on it. Hallie, can I please read a quote from my book that you are currently sitting on? Atolia says, Hallie, what are you doing? <laughs> are you trying to read my book? You really don't want me to read this quote, do you? What I'm trying to say is, Hallie, it's serious, stop. Atolia says, all wars make men monsters, all wars and all men. It's true. Okay. The king, Jen, is about to ride out to like encourage the outpost soldiers. And I turned the page and had a terrible feeling of dread that he is going to be ambushed. And um, then I uh, accidentally glanced at the next page. So I turned the page to this one and then accidentally glanced at the next page and saw the line. Then they tied the body of the king over a horse and led it away. Oops, I accidentally spoiled myself for the next page. But I already guessed. I'm psychic. Things are not good. I know the king is obviously alive. Jen is obviously alive, but um, he's been kidnapped by whoever just ambushed him and his group and killed almost everyone, except for Ferris and a couple of other people I don't know yet. I'm assuming it was the Meads, but things are not good. And I don't know how much we're gonna know about what's happening with the king because Ferris isn't there. So I mean, I guess if he learns afterwards, then he can write about it. I hope so. Drama. Wait, never mind. I thought that Ferris was going back to the Aetolians. But he's following after Jen. <laughs> he loves him so much. My grandfather, who was Erendites, Erendites is working with the Meads. We knew he was bad. It's not surprising, but it was a twist that I was not expecting. Oh, she chose drama today. This interrogation scene is one of those scenes that could be one of two things. So it's either, uh, Jen has some secret plan that we don't know about, and that's why he's talking very conversationally as they are torturing him, uh, and is not surprised in the least by anything that's happening. Also, I think Ion, the traitor, is in on the plan, if there is a plan. That's option one. Option two is there is no plan, and the king, Eugenides Jen, is... Um, pretending that he doesn't care what's going on and that he's not surprised uh, because that is his coping mechanism because like that is one of his coping mechanisms when he's out of his depth is to just like pretend 
everything's okay or pretend that he knows exactly what's going on. And if it, that is the case, then it'll probably make it seem like that's what's happening for like two chapters and then it'll be revealed that Jen actually had a plan all along. So it's actually option one. Or he figured out a plan somewhere in the middle of that. At least I hope so. I will be very disappointed if this turns out to... Well, I, it won't. It won't. This is Megan Wallen Turner. <laughs> I have to keep reading this scene. Goodbye. I knew it. I knew he was faking. This is so sweet. This scene is so sweet. Just Jen and Ferris talking in sign language to each other. Oh, I can't wait to see what happens next. Ah, I love these books. Was that the return of the thief? The escape from the Meads camp? Was that the return of the thief? Or is there going to be more thievery going on? Were Ed, Isatolia, and Sunus in on this plan? Was this the plan? Who knows? It's almost one in the morning, but I'm going to read another chapter. I love when books make me do this. I miss this. I have not been reading enough. Okay, let's go. I have so many, so many updates today. There's just so much to talk about. So Jen exploded the Meads camp. And everyone is terrified of him and like horrified at the violence of that act, which I mean, so am I. Hallie, really? Is this the moment? Hallie, Hallie, stop it. Don't do that to my chair, please. That was a lot that he, that was a lot. And I do not blame Ferris for not wanting to be near him right now. This conversation with Edith and Atolia is really good. Um, I really love their relationship. I love their friendship so much. And the fact that they are like the tacticians of this entire thing is a great. And they're talking about who Jen is. And because he is not acting like Jen. I mean, because... Because an act of violence like that is not a Jen sort of thing. It is a Eugenides thief sort of thing. As in the god. And he's done things like this before, I remember. It's just... Uh, I understand why Atolia is upset about it, and I hope that Edis is right. That it is mostly the god working through him, making him do these horrible things, not just him by himself. Anyway, this speech of Jen talking to to the royal ambassador. Hallie, why are you determined to stop me from reading quotes? <laughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to read another quote. Why must you block me again? Okay. <laughs> really? Just sticking your tail up? Again, this is a serious matter, Hallie. 
pray that I triumph today, Fordad, or that I die, said Eugenides, bending from the back of his horse to look at the brailing in the eye. If I live through this day and I am not king, then all that remains will be the thief. And every sovereign of the continent who betrayed me will wake choking in their own blood, I swear it. Your king in his innermost chamber with his rune stones laid out on the table and his ship lamps by his bed and his curtains trimmed in beads of carved jet, he will not be the first one to die, but the last. I say it three times, Fordad. It will be so. It will be so. It will be so. Wait, hang on. There's literally one page after what I was just, there was one page left of the chapter after what I was, after my last clip. And I was like, there can't be anything crazy that happens on this one last page of the chapter. I'm not going to have another update. It's fine. Why am I even surprised? Um, <laughs> Eugenides uh, yelling for Arandites. Then a single bolt of lightning strikes the camp. A tent in the camp. A tent with Arandites in it, I'm guessing. Oh my god, how... <laughs> Why am I even surprised? You know, okay, this this next thing I'm about to say is going to be a major spoiler for a big part in the third book of the Farsala trilogy. So um, if you haven't read the Farsala trilogy, first of all, if you like the Queen's Thief books, you will absolutely love the Farsala trilogy and you should not listen to the next minute or so of what I'm about to say because it is a huge spoiler. Um, Spoiler starts now. <laughs> Almost this exact same thing happens to someone just as terrible in the third book of the Farsala trilogy. Uh, like a, a bolt of lightning hitting a major general of the bads of the like enemy. And this is just as satisfying and I have abs I absolutely do not mind at all that the, it's the exact same thing. I don't even care if she got the idea from the Farsala trilogy or if it's just coincidence that it's the same thing. It's just so, it's just such a satisfying thing to happen in a fantasy war setting. Okay, spoilers done. Okay, I have now actually finished the chapter. I read the last paragraph after the little line break. Um, Allie? Okay. And I really appreciate Jen and his father's relationship. Like the king just fell into his arms, fell into his father's arms. And that is, that's good. That's good. I think that that means that Jen was kind of being controlled by Eugenides, the god, um, throughout this chapter. That feels like that may have been happening. And now, uh, Everything that has happened has caught up with him, and he is undone. Oh my god. What a chapter. What a set of chapters that I have read tonight. I'm going to finish this tomorrow. Good night. Hello. I am not doing another time lapse because I'm sure you are tired of watching me speed eat popsicles but it looks like relius might be dead i never trust when a character is off screen and has not been confirmed dead but they the everyone we see thinks that they're dead i never trust that especially in these books because it usually means they're going to come back at some point but it is also possible that relius might be dead and it's strange to be sad about this character who became likable over the books after being absolutely horrific in whatever early book it was where he was like torturing Jen.
it's very odd to now be sad. But I am sad because Ferris is crying and Talaeus is crying and that's sad. Also, I'm sure I'm pronouncing this wrong, but Sejanus, 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 Sejanus? Anyway, that character who I think is, hi Hallie, I think is Ferris's uncle, if I remember correctly, who was a traitor to the king, but also Ferris has fond memories of him early in or very early in the book. There's just a brief mention that Sejanus, 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 however you pronounce his name, was kind to Ferris. And I remember that and I have a feeling that it might be important to remember that. We'll find out. Ugh. I just love the way that Ferris thinks and like logics things out. It, I don't know, reading it is just a good brain feel. I thought of the king haunted by Lauder. I thought of how much he hated Sejanus and I thought about the prophecy. Sejanus had mocked and humiliated the king, so had many others, but it was Sejanus who had come so close to killing him. The king had seen him directing the assassins in the garden without recognizing the danger. He'd survived that attack by inches, fear and hatred twined together, looking at the stones and the delicate feather of a wren. Zikos's cuff link and Sejanus's ring, I saw a pattern. I saw the relationship between all of the pieces, hate, fear, revenge, remorse. I saw it as if it were one of the Magus's equations, and I could calculate the outcome. Whatever it was that Sejanus knew, learning it would destroy the king. Yes, it is almost 1 a.m. and I have another popsicle. What of it? This exchange, this like several page exchange between Ferris and Sejanus as they climb the mountain is really intense. Like I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat waiting for whatever Ferris's plan is. I feel like he's been planning to like, okay, this might be crazy, but I have it in my head that Ferris's plan is to push Sejanus off the cliff so that he can never reveal the secrets that will destroy the king. Um, I don't feel like Ferris, I don't know if Ferris would do that, but that's what I have in my head as his plan, like that's what I've been picturing his plan to be every time he's like, oh, it's not the right time. Oh, I, I'm running out of time to do the thing that I'm going to do. Good morning. It's time to finish this book. Let's do it. Wait, hang on, before I do a time lapse, I need to talk about what I read last night. I think that since the last time I updated, Ferris went back to camp. They discovered that Sejanus was gone. Then no let up who set him free. Then other things were happening. Then um, they Sejanus was like up on top of the cliff, getting their attention and telling them that there was um, that the Medes were coming from a different direction. So uh, Jen and um, his father and their like company of soldiers whatever went to that pass and almost everybody died and that was a lot um almost everybody died including jen's father which is sad because i liked jen's father and jen obviously loved his father so that was very sad and then ferris sejanus Reveal, accidentally revealed that Ferris was the one that let him escape and Ferris was very worried that he was going to be killed for treason but uh, the king didn't do anything to him and uh, Atolia told Ferris that uh, when the king gives his heart he gives it fully and that almost made me cry because the king loves Ferris 
and cares about him so much and understands why he did the things he does or why he does the things he does and is not and isn't going to punish him for it so I love it and now I'm almost done so let's now cue the time lapse of finishing the book wait hang on this line just reminded me of a thing that I forgot to mention um the line is uh Edith says I dreamed of the eruption again last night I forgot I was gonna say that isn't the volcano gonna erupt in this book It's on the cover. It was alluded to in recent books. I don't remember which ones. And I thought that it was going to be a thing that happened in this book. And I'm getting really close to the end of the book. So I don't know if the volcano erupting is going to be like a cliffhanger at the end of this book or if it's gonna happen in a good way or a bad way. I mean, how could it be a good way? Unless it somehow erupts just on the meat army. <laughs> I don't know, but I, I, is, is the volcano gonna erupt in the last 50 pages of this book? I guess I'll find out. It. I love it so much. I don't even know what to say. The ending was perfect. It was perfect. I forgot to mention before, when I was doing my update earlier, that I hadn't known or hadn't, I had like somehow missed that Atolia was pregnant again and totally missed that Edis was also pregnant. And so when they were getting sent back to Atolia and it said something about Atolia being very pregnant, I was like, what? <laughs> Cause I had thought that she and Edis were like fighting in the war, but I guess they were just strategizing and like directing everything. They weren't actually fighting. If it was mentioned between when she had her miscarriage and to, near the end when they were being sent back to Atolia, when the um, Edis and Atolia and Sunis were being sent back to Atolia, if it, like I somehow missed wherever it was mentioned that she got pregnant again. <laughs> so I was surprised by that. Anyway, she had twins which is perfect. And one of them is named after Jen's father, which is perfect. And the other one is Eugenia, the thief. Jen's daughter is going to be the next thief. I don't know why I wasn't like thinking about that as being an obvious like possibility that his like I knew that they were trying to have kids and they were trying to have an heir, but it didn't, never occurred to me that he would also be having a child who could be the thief. So that was great. That was a great, not a twist. It was like probably people who pay more attention have read the books more recently and stuff maybe would have expected that, but not me. Um, so it was a nice surprise for me. Also, Relius is alive, which I guessed, um, so I'm very glad but we didn't get to see a reunion in this book because Ferris just mentions that like in the future they will find out that Relius survived and he will be sent back and and he and Tileus and Ferris and Tileus will cry happy tears about it but at that at this time Tileus is too consumed by his grief to enjoy the celebrations which is sad for Tileus but the celebrations when Jen arrives back in Atolia are wonderful I love that whole chapter. I love that they are celebrating by dancing on the roof. 
it's just so appropriate to Jen's character. And then like the the end, the the end part was actually was like a little bit of a letdown because it was just like the the three countries are united, the gods are happy, the end. It felt very like um cliche almost, but then of course there was the epilogue where mind blown. You have this sneak this like peek into like the god's realm, Sacred Mountain, and this story about Alita and um, her lost earring or her stolen earring tied into this flashback of Jen as a child being trained by his grandfather and stealing this earring from these people at, at, at the tavern who he doesn't think anything of it except he feels bad for the woman whose earring got stolen but turns out he's actually stealing back, he's doing his god's work without knowing it, stealing the earring back from, I forget the name of the god that took it, and bringing it back to Alita's temple, which his grandfather is mad at him for because he doesn't realize that it is the thief's work that he is doing. So that was great, and Eugenides never realized that he had been doing the god's work in that instance as a child until Atolia dresses up as Alita for this celebration thing and uh, tells him the story about the earring and then Jen has to go and sit in the temple for a while and like have an existential crisis. I love when Jen has an existential crisis about how much the gods are involved in his life. I think it's great. Also, we got to see Kamet and Costas, um, which was great, made me very happy. All around, very satisfying ending, and this really feels like the end of a series, and I don't actually, I guess I don't actually know, I don't think this is the last book, and like it feels like there's a places to go from here, but it definitely feels like there's places to go from here. I don't think this is the last book, and I haven't looked into it at all because I don't know, I just haven't. <laughs> it, it wraps up like a final book really neatly, which is why it was so satisfying, I guess. Um, but definitely there is space for another book, at least, with Jen's daughter being the thief. Like, I don't know if it'll be a time skip where you get to see her as a child instead of a baby, or if it's going to, I mean, it has to be, it, we have to have the volcano eruption. Like it hasn't happened yet. Edis has just been dreaming about it almost every night. So that's going to happen. But yeah, I that's all I really have to say about the Return of the Thief. I absolutely adored it. It has kick kickstarted me back into uh reading more regularly. Uh, so I need to find some more books that are going to capture my attention the way this did so that I can continue reading more. Obviously this is five stars, if that wasn't obvious, if that wasn't clear. Hey, now I can go back to listening to the Atolian archives. Hooray! And look forward to whenever the next book comes out. Thank you again to the Tumblr user whose name I can't remember at this moment and I can't look it up because I'm filming on my phone. Thank you for sending me this copy of Return of the Thief. I very much appreciate it. I love it. It's beautiful. I'm so glad I got to read it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hope everyone, anyone watching this, enjoyed this little reading vlog and enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.